Pakistan, a nation of violence, hatred, and a breeding ground for terrorists. Yet, by the grace of God, in the midst of this spiritual desert, the life of God is blossoming. When we first went here, we found a people who were deeply committed to the Lord. Upon visiting our first church, which is pastored by one of our graduates, we heard testimony from an evangelistic team which had just returned from an outreach where they had shared the gospel in a small village populated by idol worshippers. The team shared how they had begun to preach the gospel to the people, and after a matter of hours, the village elders confronted them and said, Today we will kill you for preaching this Jesus. The team responded, We will allow you to kill us. We will even lay our heads down for the sword. But first allow us two hours to explain to you why we have come. The elders agreed, and after the team had finished sharing Christ, those same men who had just threatened to kill them now begged them, What must we do to be saved? The river of the Holy Ghost was flowing that day. Hallelujah! The boldness of the Pakistani believers is remarkable. They only need sound doctrine to rightly divide the word of truth. Actually, here is a problem. Our peoples have no education, have no ideas, have no proper teaching of Bible, no learning of Bible. They are not used to read the Bible and understand the Bible. They are not being able to give the answer. A simple question like, uh, how, uh, how come possible you are thinking about uh, Jesus Christ as a God and Jesus Christ as the Son of God? With, uh, uh, rather, uh, Jesus, uh, God has no wife. So they just thinking about like human type thinking. So it's a really shameful for us, for our peoples, for Christian peoples, who they are not being able to give them answers. We can easily understand if we are going to change the nations. We need a big, big amount of good leaders. We have no any good teachers, no good leaders, who they can properly teach us and guide us so sometimes I myself think oh no why God doesn't help us so why we have to face a lot of problem in Pakistan when we heard the great need that these pastors have we knew that the Lord was calling us to go and so we journeyed to a remote location to teach the school of Christ in the foothills of the Himalayas I'm here with brother Emmanuel Acha and his family in the back there we're, uh, we're headed up in the mountains, about 10,000 foot elevation or so. We're going to run the School of Christ up there for about 25 pastors. Just really looking forward to it. Uh, God's made a way for us to come here and we're just going to trust God that He's really going to speak to their hearts this week and that we'll have some really wonderful fruit. 21 pastors and 4 evangelists came to the conference. Most of these men have had little formal training and what little training is available to them is mostly either dead religion or the false doctrine of prosperity. The first thing we did was to join together to seek the Lord with all our hearts in prayer. Next, we began teaching the lessons of the school. He saw what other people couldn't see. And God tells them, go back and preach what God The last day of the training, the translator turned to me and said, It's so thick, brother, it's so thick. Meaning that the presence of the Lord was so thick that there was nothing left for us to say. At that point, all teaching stopped. And for the next few hours, we just wept and rejoiced as the Lord moved amongst us. It was an awesome thing to behold, as these men were so built up in the presence of the Lord. At the close of our time together, Every man stood up to testify of what Christ had done in their life during that week. One man gave his testimony in English so that you could hear. God has sent a big blessing to Pakistan in the face of Brother Noha, and I am <laughs> thankful to God for this special blessing. And uh, during the week, first time in my life, I have come to know about the importance of fellowship with God a strong relationship in prayer with God and this was the you know miss, uh, missing point of my life in this area I was very weak but thanks God during this week God has made me strong in this area and I um, hope and I also request prayer 
for the brothers and sisters in America. They pray for me that this fellowship will be continue. This relationship with God will be continue in the future. This was the first of what we pray will be many trips to Pakistan. We also have a plan to begin financially supporting new church plants in this incredible harvest field. Please stand with us for the souls of this great nation. May the Lord bless you all with his wonderful grace. Amen. Goodbye and God bless you.